We've come to give God the glory. To give God the glory. Oh yes, we've come. Oh yes, we've come to give Him praise. To give Him praise. We come. We come to give Him the honor. To give Him the honor. Let's magnify Him. Let's magnify Him. All of our ways. In all of our ways. Who are we? We're interceding, Christian Center. We hope that you felt welcome from the time that you entered into the house of the Lord. God bless you, beloved. Once again, Apostle Dr. Schaefer giving God glory, praise, and honor for all that he's doing. Beloved, my heart is full with the joy that only the Lord God Almighty can give you. Beloved, I want to first encourage you. Think on these things. The Apostle Paul told us to think on good things. Hallelujah. Watch how God blesses you once your focus changes to the good things and not allow those things that Amy is throwing at you to permeate or to uh, impede or invade your heart. Hallelujah. In the same token, the Lord drops inside my spirit a sermon that came from Psalms chapter 27. In Psalms chapter 27, in particular verse 13, the scripture tells us that we have to trust in God. Hallelujah. It tells us because the bro, uh, uh, man David said, he said, you know, I would have fainted if I had not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So in a sermon that's entitled, Hold On. Don't let go. Let's go in the sanctuary and hear what thus said the Lord. Come on, let's go. If you would. In a sermon I want to minister to you, and this Lord dropped inside of my spirit, and I'm going to call this Holding On, Don't Let Go. Holding On, Don't Let Go. Some are saying, Wow, what a title! What a strange title! Perhaps this title is even a hard one to swallow for those who really are in a relationship with the Lord. Hard to own up to, but how many have been at the brink of giving up? How many have been ready to cast in the towel, the proverbial towel? How many are ready, have been ready to say, that's it. I cannot go one step further on your last nerve and someone's plucking your very last nerve. Yes, even preachers go through this. They may not tell you, but preachers are human and they go through the same thing. Even the super saved go, they go through these things. The thing that I've noticed about my walk with in my interaction with people is that most are ready to throw in the towel right before their breakthrough. Right before they're on the threshold of their blessing and they're ready to quit. They're at the last 10 steps of a 100 mile hike and they're ready to stop. My God, my God. The psalmist addressed it. This in verse 13, speaking that he would have fainted if he didn't believe that God would make a way out of no way. If he didn't believe that God would carry him that extra step. If he didn't believe that God had the power and ability, he said, I would have fainted if I did not believe. He in essence said because of his faith in God, he would not quit. He would not let go. He would hold on and he would keep on pressing toward the mark of the high call. Hallelujah. Brother Thomas, though, I, I didn't know that your world was so much different than mine. I didn't, didn't know that. 
In your world, children respected their parents. In your world, mothers didn't have to work outside of the home. In your world, all we had to all you had to do was pay for a Campbell, not car payments for five, six, seven years monthly. But the summons in your world, you would have you didn't have a 30 year mortgage, I don't believe. A tent could not possibly cost as much as a house. And you made the tent yourself more than likely. To which the brother Summers would answer, he would say, yes, our world may seem different. But we had things such as children disobeying parents and dishonoring parents. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. If you won't believe me, ask David about Absalom, the writer of this Psalms here, about his son Absalom. And yes, mothers didn't work outside the home. But the work of sowing, the work of fetching water from miles around, the work of foraging and, and farming instead of our seven and Kroger. Uh, not many leftovers were in the house, so every day was a cooking day. It was not a break day. Uh, maybe no, not 30 years of mortgage, but if we fall behind on a bill, I run the risk of being pulled into slavery or one of my children being pushed into slavery. So the psalmist would answer us that though trouble don't last always, trouble comes to every life. Everyone has some trouble in their life. Everyone has some rain that will fall in their life. This lets us know that trouble only destroys those who allow trouble to destroy them. Those who give heed to the weapon, give the weapon what the weapon needs to prosper. I, I mean, I mean, I can see discern and even feel that the weapon is there, but I will not let that weapon make me faint of heart and you should not let that weapon make you faint of heart. Though the bear is bigger than me, though the bear is stronger than me, I am smarter than the bear. Though the horse can outrun me, it is I who ride the horse and not the horse who rides me. Uh, my God, I have dominion. Why? Because I was created in the image of the creator. And he who created everything gave me dominion. He gave me stewardship over the earth. He did not give it to the bear. He did not give it to the lion. He did not give it to the dolphin. He did not give it to the horse. He did not give it to anybody, but he gave it to me as a man. So, beloved, hold on. Hold on. Oh, but pastor, you don't understand. Folks coming up against me and with their words and some coming up against me with action. Weapons, real weapons are being formed. So, so Pastor Brother David just didn't know. He didn't know. Well, his son Solomon declared there's nothing new underneath the sun. Even the Lord Jesus said, if they hate me, then they're going to hate you. So you're going to go through. You're going to be oppressed and depressed, my God. And David did not miss this in his plea in verse 12. He said, deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen against me, and as such breed out cruelty. He did not miss that. We have got to take up that call of David in our lives. And ask the Lord to deliver us from the snares of others who are out to hurt us. Deliver us from the snares of the enemy because we're all going to have enemies. My God, my God. David said, uh, I feel you because the devil will bring, will bring forth liars in the spirit and he'll bring forth liars in the natural. He'll bring forth liars and you'll be like, where did that come from? It could be someone close to you. He'll bring forth someone to come against you in that way. Hallelujah. David tells us that. He said, I would have lost heart if I didn't have faith. Oh, my God, my God. I would have lost heart if I didn't have faith. Brother David, I can feel you. I feel you because many things that we go through will go for our heart. This is why the Bible tells us to guard our heart with all diligence because out of our heart comes the issue of life. People say, I had a heart to do this or I had a heart to do that. People may say, my heart felt this way or my heart felt that way. Oh my God, my God. But unless you have faith, you have no real heart. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us to guard that heart. Guard, and it's just not a, a cliche. It's not just a saying. There's a reason for us to guard our heart. Guard, and it does not mean that you close it off and not allow anything into it. 
Gardening means that you are careful what does enter your heart. You don't allow every foolish thing that come up against you to enter your heart. Some things you've got to learn to look over and not allow that room inside of your heart. Hallelujah. You cannot close off your heart because if you shut it off, you risk isolating people or someone uh, whom God wants you to reach. If you shut off your heart. And worse yet, you risk isolating yourself. We were created to interact with people. And if we don't interact with people, we lose our ability to sympathize and to empathize. If we don't interact with people, we are actually being kind of selfish. So, guard your heart with diligence. Diligence in this sense means guarding your heart against danger. Guarding your heart against Danger. Checking out what trying was trying to come into your heart. Doing doing a virtual strip search of what's trying to come into your heart. Where did it originate? At? What could it possibly want? And don't allow if you're not sure what it is. Don't allow it into your heart. We have to protect our hearts. And how we protect it? We take every thought under captivity. Don't allow the enemy to have free rent space inside of your head and your heart. Don't allow him to bounce around and cause you to be confused and to cause you not to know which direction you should go. Don't allow it, my God. So taking a thought captive means you have to grab the leaves and follow the stem down to the root. Because if you just grab a leaf, it will easily be plucked off and do no harm at all to the plant itself. My God, consider if we grab an apple off a tree, or we grab a pear off a tree, what harm does it do to the tree? If we grab a grape off of the vine, what harm does it do to the vine? This is why little foxes are so dangerous. As the story goes in the Bible, the scripture goes in the Bible, telling us to be aware of little foxes. That's why they're so dangerous, because they're not big enough to reach up and pluck the grape off. So they will bring the grape down to their level. And how they bring the grape down to their level, they can't jump to reach that grape. They can't do that. So how they bring it down to their level, they begin to paw around the vine. They begin to paw around the vine until they get to a place that's tender in the vine. And when they get to a place that's tender in the vine, they begin to slowly gnaw away at the vine. The vine serving as the root, of course, for the plant. They begin to gnaw away at the root, at the root or the vine. And eventually what will happen is the whole grape branch, the whole grape vine would fall over and all the grapes would fall on the ground and he would eat what he wanted. And oftentimes he wouldn't eat all of it. So a lot of it would go to waste. So David, King David, as he wrote this psalm, he knew that God was with him. God was on his side. Faith to David was a substance. Faith was a substance. It had a promise. Faith had a promise. It had substance. It had subsistence. Faith had a promise. Faith had a plan. Faith gave him hope. Faith in our lives should have substance. Should have substance. Faith in our lives has to be based on our belief, which is the promises that God has made. Faith has to have substance. It has to have a plan. My God, my God. Hallelujah. And faith, his faith, David's faith was trustworthy. It gave him hope and made it trustworthy. Could you imagine if David had become disheartened, had lost faith before he faced Goliath or before he faced the bear, before he faced the giant? Could you imagine if David had lost faith when his own son, Absalom, rebelled against him? If he had lost faith, we would not have had Psalms 23, the 23rd of Psalm. Or, or, or would we heard him utter the words, never have I seen the righteous forsaken or his seed beg for bread. If David had lost his faith. My God, hallelujah. Glory unto God. Hallelujah. In these verses above, David reassures us that no matter what comes our way and things are going to come our way, no matter what 
walks our way, no matter how close those things come to us, God will always be with us because the Lord said, never will I leave you, nor will I forsake you. Look at this. Did you see the difference there? Never will I leave you, nor will I forsake you. See, some people will be forsaking you, but they're right in your presence. They're right around you. There's a difference. My God, the Lord said, I won't leave you, nor will I forsake you. My God, hallelujah. I won't, I won't allow things to happen to you while I'm around you. So it won't happen to you because I'm always going to be around you because I'm not going to leave you. My God, hallelujah. Glory unto God. David said, if my father leave and my mother leave me, oh my God, there's a song that says something like that. Uh, I'll go if I have to go by myself. Hallelujah. Oh my God, I feel you because I feel sometimes that I'm going by myself. I'm going through things by myself. I feel that so I know what it is you're saying. Beloved, we have got to yet hold on when God gives us something to do and don't let go. We all go through things in life because of what? Life happens. It happens. Sometimes we cause our own problems. Yes, we do. Yes, sometimes we're our own worst enemy. The song says that sometimes the enemy inside is me. Sometimes others do things to us. Most theologians say it like this. We're always about to go through. We're always in. We're always about to come. Or we're always about to come out of a storm. Or we just left one. So don't think for a moment that anyone is exempt. No matter how much they smile and say everything's handed Hanky Dory, no matter how much they smile and, and make you feel like their life is all ice cream, trust me, there are times when that ice cream melts. There are times where it melts and they're, they're not feeling themselves, my God, because everyone goes through something. No, not one escapes everything. But we must not allow the storm to dictate our faith. We got to go beyond just having faith when we're out of the storm. We got to go beyond just having faith when we know we're about to come out of the storm. We've got to learn to have faith even when we're going into the storm. With more than anything, we got to learn to have faith when we're in the midst of our storm. We're in the middle of our storm. We've been tossed to and fro. We've been pushed left and right. We've got to learn to still have faith that God has us. Glory unto God. We cannot allow the storm to dictate our lives. Job said, he said, though you slay me, yet, hallelujah, will I trust you, yet will I trust you, yet will I believe you, yet will I adhere to you, yet will I chasten unto your throne, yet will I hope in you. Though I go through these things, I'm not going to lose my faith in you because you have been too good. This is what we got to have. We got to learn to hold on and don't let go. Oh, the old song says, uh, hold on to his unchanging hand, my God. Even though the storm is coming against you, my God, my God. His unchanging hand is the hand that will reach out and pull your feet out of the mire clay. His unchanging hand is the hand that will reach and grab you, though that you were walking on water. His hand will reach out and grab you and pull you back up to the surface. Hallelujah. Glory unto God. Hallelujah. Mm. My advice is to spend your time on worthwhile endeavors. Paul advised us of this in his parting remarks. Paul said, I fought the good fight. I fought the good fight. Hallelujah. I fought the good fight and I did not lose my faith. So he said, the good fight, the good fight. That suggests that some fights are not even worth it. Some things are not even worth your time. Some things you don't need to spin your wheels trying to get to operate in a certain way or go a certain way. Some fights are not even worth it. I see people fighting all the time on things such as social media. And I can say that there have been times where I've done delved into silly stuff like that. But some fights are not even worth it. Why cast your pearls before swine and fr become frustrated when the swines do not appreciate the beauty of the pearls? Become frustrated when the swines kick your pearls aside and come after you because you're more tasty, you're more delectable than the pearls are. My God, my God. We often fight fights that the enemy designed to take our focus of what's really important. Ha. Ah. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah. We fight these fights that are not worth anything. 
But as Paul said, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are pleasant, though, uh, 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 though you see those other things around you, you do not like. Don't do like Peter and take your eyes off the prize. Don't be like Peter and take your eyes off what the Savior is doing and you're not doing. Hallelujah. You lose heart when you look at what you don't have versus what you have. The comparison, that's the thief of joy. Comparison steals your joy all day long and twice on any day that ends with an A and a Y. Comparison, comparing yourself to your neighbors, comparing yourself to your co-workers, comparing yourself to other ministries, comparing yourself to other priests, uh, comparing yourself, that's the thief of your joy. Huh? Yeah, you see someone in, in, in Paris, France, or wherever, and you see them on the beach at the Serengeti or wherever they may be, you see all these things, but you don't know that it's not as good as what they say it is. It costs them something. Comparison is just a way to allow jealousy to come up on the inside of you and make you feel as if you don't measure up. My God, my God. You lose heart when you compare. When you devalue your blessings, you lose heart when your faith is blinded by your current situation. Keep your eyes on the prize, what Brother Paul said. In the church, we spend too much time looking at others are doing or what they have which causes us to miss the move of God. We miss what God wants us to do. Most we spend time uh, looking at each other and, and, and we don't even have it. We're looking out at people who we think have it together. They don't even have it together. But even if you have it somewhat together, don't forget that all of sin and fall short of the glory. There's no perfect person out there. If you run across the perfect person, they're lying to you. My God, hallelujah. That's why we need a Savior because no one is perfect. No one could fit the bill. No one could die for our sins. Keep your eyes on the tear and not on God. Don't put your eyes, don't even keep your eyes on the wheat. We must keep our eyes on the Lord and what the Lord has for us to do. The thing about wheat and tares, they look just like each other. In fact, the kernel of a wheat is smaller than the kernel of grain. The kernel of a terrace is bigger, rather, than a kernel of grain. The enemy wants you to keep your eyes on the terror, and the terror won't even nourish you. The terror can't even be eaten. It's poisonous to the human system. If you keep your eye on the terror, it'll cause you to lose hope. It'll cause you, because what happened is that when it comes time to feed off the terror that you kept your eyes on, you realize that it's not edible. It cannot sustain you. And when you realize it can't sustain you, you've allowed the wheat to get away. My God, my God. And so, so you'll lose hope because you've been looking at the wrong things. Hallelujah. Beloved, hold on and don't let go. When I, where I see the move of God is important as where I see his move is among the living. God said, I live, deal with the living. I deal with the living. The, the dead have already done what they're going to do. I'm dealing with the living. I don't have to wait to glory to be blessed because I'm, uh, I'm blessed here because I'm among the living. Jesus said God is the God of living, not the God of the dead. Uh, though he is the God of all, acknowledging that some do not make him their God. Some make situations their God. Some make the comparison theory their God. They make everything, their parents, they make their friends, they make their spouse, they make everything their God and not God himself. Hallelujah. And when you're not walking in him, he's referring to you as the dead. As the dead. You just haven't laid down yet. David said is this. We say, I will not lose my heart. I will not lose my faith. I will not faint. In other words, I won't pull back. Faint is not necessarily, uh, faint is not necessarily you passing out completely and not able to do anything as if you're in a deep comatic sleep. No, faint is when you pull back, when you don't keep going forth the way that you are going. When you try to change direction, you change, you slow down the way, the, your, your acceleration. You, this is what fainting is. Hallelujah. And when you are not walking with him, hallelujah, you're falling back and he refers to you as the dead. 
David said, I won't lose heart. I won't give up. I will hold on to what God has for me to do. Hallelujah. I've seen it so many times. Many issues have come up in people's lives and it caused them to go completely off track. I've seen many weapons formed against me. I've seen weapons formed against others who were in the faith. But one thing that I have not seen in the words of David, the, the, the King David, he said that I have not seen the righteous forsaken. I have not ever seen myself forsaken in any situation I've been in. I've never seen myself forsaken. God has always been there. He's always had my back. He has my side. He always had me in my best interest and all. Even when I was crying and falling out and not thinking that, that, that he had me, he had me. Even when I did not understand how he was blessing me, he was blessing me and keeping me. My God, hallelujah. I'm here this morning to encourage someone. I want to encourage you, don't give up. I'm here to encourage you to don't throw in the towel. I'm here to encourage you to hold on to his unchanging hand. I came by here to tell you that the storms that are raging in your life, you got to hold on to one who masters the storm, one who rides the storm. I came to tell you that though you have been crushed, talked about, buked and scorned, though life seems to have dealt you a bad hand, God is able to take the lemons in your life and to make lemonade. I came to tell you that the race is not given to the swift, but it's given to those who don't give up, those who hold on. Hallelujah. It's given to those who endure, those that trust God, those who are like David and they wait for the move of God. Hallelujah. We got to be like David and have the light shine in every dark place in our life. God is able to spot, shine a spotlight on you. Oh, just have faith. Hallelujah. Just have faith. Hold on. Just have faith. Faith. Hold on a little while out and just have faith. Hallelujah. Let someone know that you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. No matter how much they try to block you from seeing the light, you've got to move them out the way and see the light and go toward the light. Hallelujah. You've got to let someone know, let the enemy know that your weeping days are at the end. It's time and you're raising up. Hallelujah. Let them know that God is giving me my joy back. I'm going to hold on. Let them know that their ego uh, uh, is going to soar. Tell somebody, hallelujah, that you're going to make it. Somebody, yeah, hallelujah, thank God for your making it. Thank God for your making it. Hallelujah. We're praying for you right now. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus, we honor you right now. We bless you and worship you for your mercy and grace which endures to us, O oh God. Lord God, not as if we deserve anything, but your mercy and grace has saw fit to give us, O oh God, an opportunity to live in you. Now, Father God, every word that I spoke, O oh God, you know it came from the sincerity of my heart and came from a place where as you put it there. Father God, let not the words spoken fall on fallow ground let it fall on good ground God touch move deliver and set free your children as they go through the things that they go through I trust you and I believe you father hallelujah I pray for the peace of Israel as we've been taught in your word to always pray for the peace of Israel father God I'm praying for those who are in harm's way there I pray for those innocent souls oh God that have lost their lives and those that have are losing their lives even now on both sides of the corn. Father, have mercy, O oh God. And allow, O oh God, your word to come forth, O oh God, showing that you are a God of mercy. Now we bless you and glorify you in advance for all that you have done. It's in the matchless name of your son, Jesus the Christ, we do pray and we declare and decree it and we stand on it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, beloved. I'm praying that the Lord touch you in a special way on this day. I'm praying that he touch your heart in a way on this day where you are about to quit, but you ain't quitting. You're holding on longer. Hallelujah. Holding on until you see your change come. Your change is truly on the way. Hallelujah. If the Lord so touch your heart, and you want to be a blessing to Interceding Christian Center, you can do that by going to the Android or the Apple Store, 
download the Givelify or the Cash app. If you choose to bless us using the Givelify app, look for Interceding Christian Center in West Memphis, Arkansas. Alternatively, if you choose to bless us using the Cash app, then beloved, hallelujah, our Cash app identification is dollar sign Interceding CC. Dollar sign I N T E R C E D I N G C C. May the Lord God continue to bless you and keep you in a mighty way. Hallelujah. As we continue to pray for you and we'll see you here bright and early next week. God bless you on behalf of Interceding Christian Center. I thank God for you and love you with the love of Christ. God bless. Pray that you enjoyed the word today and that it touches you within a deep place in your heart and it will spark a change that should come about in your life. If the Lord so touched your heart and you have a desire to give, you can give to this ministry as we continue to make impacts in this city at our Givelify app. Simply download the Givelify app at one of the app or the Google store and look for Interceding Christian Center. Here at Interceding, we aspire to bring people to spiritual knowledge and thus victory. God bless you.